it's so good to be here this morning. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good when talk God deals with the little things. It's often the little things in our life that become so annoying that uh, they grow up and leave home. No, no, that's quite it. Um, God blesses us when we cry out to Him and uh, they send that ring to him. And we get double blessed. Good to be here this morning. I'm not going to climb on the stage because I've got a few uh, athletic tricks that have to happen this morning. So can you see me down here? I want to greet those that are at home or online. Hey, um, one of the bits of news that we need to share is that we're not going to continue to be online um, from this week onwards. We're going to take recordings. But uh, if you're staying home just to watch us, you'll have to wait till Monday or Tuesday uh, for the recording. Um, we've just made that decision. We want to up the quality and do a few things with our recordings, so uh, we'll be back. But uh, this is the last live recording for now. We've been recording since COVID. That got us started on this one. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's great. I like watching the Olympics. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Discipline. I, I should have written today's sermon. I mean, all the adverts are about the Olympics, right? We were noting that last night. It's like... Every other ad heard something about the Olympics. I feel like the sermon is the Olympics. The discipline of preparing ourselves to serve. But I'm not going to see you all right. Maybe. I want to talk about this. Let's put my slideshow up. Thanks, Chris. Because we're community. Everybody say that with me, please. Because, because we're community. That's the title of what I want to share, but it's actually the answer to a question. Let's see if I can find the question. This will work. There we go. Now, why is it important for believers to regularly meet together? Because we are community. I think it's very clear in the Bible that God created us to be in community and part of a community. I think over the generations, the, the community spirit, this thing about community has been broken down. Maybe because today we live in this instant, automatic, come on, let's get it happening world, and we don't have the patience or the endurance or something. We used to years ago, and I'm probably just talking to a few that are older, not older than me, we used to all have a gap in the hedge. And if you needed an egg or some flour or a hand next door, you just sent one of the kids through. And the whole community thing was we didn't have fences up and we didn't have remotes that opened the car, uh, the garage. And, you know, we knew our neighbours and they knew us and we had community. And that's only on that scale, but on a bigger scale, everyone gave their time and their effort and their energy to pull together around things that were special. And that community spirit was so part of how life was. But somewhere, somehow along the line, we've lost some of that community. But I think uh, we need to understand that God wants us to be together. Here's a scripture that's pretty well known. I want to talk a little bit from it this morning. Hebrews 10 and 25. Look it up in your own device if you've got that or your Bible with you. Do not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I love that in the Passion translation. It says this. Uh, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day drawing. Dawning, sorry. We should come together regularly. I guess as a church, we have lots of opportunities to come together. I'm not just talking about or into Sunday morning or Sunday evening. Uh, we have lots of opportunities at, at different levels to come together. Our youth get together on one night. Fridays. And our connect people groups get together on what night? And? And? There we go. I can tell you go to different groups. 
this opportunity for us to get together. And there's good reason. And I want to talk about that this morning, the why of coming together. <coughs> Excuse me, my wife gave me a cold. I got too close to it. It's forgivable. The cold. God wants us to understand this. He created us to be relational and interdependent. God created us to be relational and interdependent. You know, in the beginning when it says that God created, created us in His image, one of the things that strikes my mind when I hear that God made us in His image was that He's a relational God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Perfect relation. And so when God created us, He created us not for isolation. I want to talk a little bit about isolation in a minute. Don't get me started on that yet. But God really created us to be relational beings. I read a verse that said when we greet each other, we should greet with a holy kiss or a hug. Now that was pre-COVID. We've had to change some of the text. But the point was, we're relational beings. We're not supposed to be apart. We're supposed to find each other and support each other and encourage each other. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15, it says, you know, when one weeps, we weep with them. And when one rejoices, we rejoice with them. We're supposed to be together for the reason of encouragement and comfort and celebration. So uh, we need to be part of the family. Talk about brothers and sisters in the Lord. And for me, it's always good when the family can come together and enjoy one another's company. Here's some thoughts around the need for us to come together. We need each other as a community uh, for this whole interdependence. What does that mean? What does that big word mean? Interdependence. Relying on one another. Supporting one another, comforting one another. Interdependence means that I need you and you need me and we need each other. We have a, symbi a symbiotic relationship. It's a big word I've been learning lately. Like symbiotic. We need to strengthen each other. What I have for you and what you have for me is needed as much as each other. My example might be the bee and the flower. <coughs> The flower needs to be. If, if not, I can't think so. If the bee, if the flower doesn't have a bee come past, the flower can never pollinate and have a fruit. At the same time, if the bee never visits the flower, it never gets the pollen that it can take home to make honey so you and I can enjoy some of that. There's a symbiotic relationship going on there. The one needs the other. God was wonderful when he created some of nature because that goes on all the time. We have a similar kind of relationship as the body of Christ. We need to come together so that what you have and what I have can be good to each other, good for each other. The Bible describes us, the church, as a body. And if you read the scriptures about the body of Christ, you find that it talks about, I don't know if this is my slide, maybe let's go there. Oh, in the head. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Then look this up yourself. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you're the body of Christ and each of you are part of it. So we can't say that we don't need each other. We aren't all one lump. We're not all just a hand. We're not all just a foot. The Bible talks about the body of Christ as being a many-membered body that equally need each other. Some parts seemingly have greater honor, but not so, because we all need each other. If the body was just a hand, we were the seeing, we were the hearing. Man. We need each other. And so the Bible describes our relationship as one of um, being interdependent, It's an interesting verse. This one might rub you up the wrong way, I don't know. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. 
I've heard this described as sandpaper on the street. This is where I'm going to get athletic. As iron sharpens iron, here's the reason for us to come together, just to make sparks. Come on. As iron sharpens iron. <clears throat> Again, in uh, the Passion Translation, it says, It takes a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade, and so one person sharpens the character of another. I don't know if we've got any master butchers in the house. Where's our health and safety officer? I'm looking for him right now. Uh, you're a chef. You must do a bit of carving. Mm -hmm. I mean, the knife's great when it's sharp, but when it's blunt, it's, it's of little value. Am I right? Find someone I can trust with a knife this time. I'm looking really hard. Anthony. I'm not trusting you. Warren, please. Help me with this. Bring your Bible and chop it off. No, no, you don't. The word of God is sharp as a two edged sword. something else needed to to get the the knife sharp and that's sharp enough. like the steel yeah. Dave I can trust you with this can you come and help me with this please come on encourage Dave as he comes I think he's got the wrist so 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 I'm in the middle of this uh, Bible says it very clearly that just as iron sharpens iron, see the knife is iron, the sharpener is iron, the two work together. Thanks guys, you can go and take those and see. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. So how many know that it doesn't work when the knife is in one place and the uh, sharpener is in another? Dave, can you bring the sharpener back up, bro? We're going to need that. No. So, so here's the answer. Here's the answer to keeping the knife sharp. The knife can be sharpened if we bring it to this place. Dave's holding the answer in his hand. But I don't have the knife anymore. So sorry to waste your time, but can you sit down again? Warren, could you bring the knife back here for me? I oh, just. One day is. I watched the news and then again. I reckon. I, um. I. I trust you. I, uh, would like to sharpen it, but I don't have a sharpener with me. It's not here right now. Yeah. Sorry to waste your time. Can you sit down again, please? What's the answer? Ah, you got to get them together. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've, I've wasted enough time already, but who's going to sharpen the knife? Nobody, not you. <laughs> Reality is, like this verse says, as iron sharpens iron. You, you can have them both, but if you can't get them together, Am I making a point? If you don't get them together, it takes the grinding wheel to sharpen the blade, it says in the Passion Version. And so one person sharpens the character of another. Can I ask one more time, Dave? And Warren, can you come back? See, this is a great example of how we need each other. These two guys have exactly what we need to get this knife sharp. We put it together. And it was quite challenging for 
many of us. It's like we were missing something. And uh, isolation is one of the enemy's tricks to get us on our own. Did you know in the animal kingdom, when hunting goes on, it's always the ones that are in isolation that are most vulnerable. The ones that are lagging behind, the, the ones that are separated from the herd, the ones that aren't, are no longer close, that get picked off first. Isolation is one of the enemy's tricks. And if he can keep us away from fellowship, and then he can keep us away from corporate worship, we will not be to support each other, we will not be to look at each other and go, how are you doing? And not just give a pet answer, but say, no, would you pray for me about my needs? Or would you pray for me about this thing? Or I'm, I'm going through this situation. We need each other to look out for one another. And so isolation is one of those trips, and sometimes we don't feel like getting up and coming together. I'll get all the hands up on this one. Have you ever had a moment where you think, I don't want to go? Is it only the pastor that says that? I don't even say what you didn't want to go to. I just knew that there'd be something. There are times when we just don't feel like getting out of our chair and going. When we just don't feel like going, we just uh, rather stay behind. But stay behind is a dangerous place. Because we need to get together to worship. Because as we worship, we corporately hear one another's hearts. As we worship, we corporately catch the sense of God's spirit and what he's saying and doing to our uh, we're doing uh, for us as a group. So we need to be together to affirm one another and to build each other up in our worship. We need to be together to engage relationally. I already mentioned this, but we're relational beings. And isolation brings us to a place of, of, of thinking things and doing things that can just bring us in. Often we think things and say things about ourselves. We doubt ourselves. We criticize ourselves when we're on our own. But when we come together and we come to a relational place and somebody greets you at the door and says, Hey, you're looking beautiful today. I'm looking at you, Anthony. You're looking beautiful today. Or, or they know you've been going through something and just pat you on the back and go, How's it going again? Are you doing alright? Just that word of encouragement, just that coming together and just hearing the voice of someone you trust. Just meeting, greeting. Part of God's plan for us is the body of Christ. How do we use the gifts of the Holy Spirit when we're at home? Now, when we come together and there's a word of knowledge or a prophecy or a word of encouragement, an act of faith, a prayer, those things we do when we are together. Now sure, I, you might get a word for me or for someone or, or I might get a get the word for someone else when I'm sitting at home praying or, or seeking God and I could text that thing to you. You could text that thing to one another. But chances are we don't. Maybe we should more often. But when we come together and we're sitting there and God prompts us with a word, we just, it's so easy to stay straight across that person. Something I just the Lord's own verse. And we share that word with one. Happens only when we get together. Happens best when we're in the same space. We get to use the gift of God for the mutual benefit of one another. I kind of touched on this, but I want to emphasize it. One of the beautiful things that happens when we come together as a body of Christ is we get to respond to the needs and watch over and watch out for one another. You know, there's a pretty mean world out there. Have you noticed? All kinds of things happen. You can get taken out any time, anywhere. But one of the most encouraging things for me as a body of Christ is that if we are troubled about something, we should have somebody that we can call. I want to promote this idea. 
But we, we should have pretty triplets. We should have unique groups. We should belong to a part of some group that we can just ring that person up and go, hey, this is happening. Can you just help me out? I woke up this morning to a text from a brother in the Lord and he said, this and this and this is happening. And straight away, they had new prompt to respond to that need. Start with thanks for telling me. Because sometimes we don't know who we can trust and who we can tell. I'm not feeling so great, but who do I tell? The pastor always says that. Right? No, I'm joking. This is it. What is it? I've been sitting here prayer at this. Let's look. Pray about this. I'm joking about that. Don't we need each other? As iron sharpens iron, we stay sharp when we can come together. Rub shoulders is the body of Christ. There are lots of other reasons, I guess. I wanted to bring those four. But I want to challenge us with this. If we only come together to get, we'll soon forget to come together. We need to come together to get. If you only come on Sunday or go to your connect group or join the youth group, whatever it is, be part of choir, for that one, what are you doing in the choir? If you only join those things just to get, you'll soon run out of energy. One of the great things about the body of Christ is that we're here together. We're blessed to be blessed according to Genesis 12. Now, if we come to church thinking, not so much about am I wearing the right clothes today, but I wonder who I can bless today. Uh, if, if I came to church thinking, today I have an opportunity to see my brother or sister in the Lord and I can bless them with a word of encouragement, with an affirmation, with a what, whatever it is, then our coming to church, our coming to our connect group, our coming to our whatever it is to be a part of becomes dynamically different. Because if your preparation wasn't, can I get there on time, but can I prepare something to give to somebody? Sometimes I prepare things to give to people who aren't even here. That's always fun. Sometimes I get something from the Lord and I think, when I see that person, I'm going to tell them. And I get here and I'm going to this is not here. But if we come not to get, but we come to give, it's a whole different dynamic. We're coming with a different home. We're, we're coming with a different expectation. Did you know when you bless somebody, it always flows back? It always flows back. I've discovered this over the years when you bless somebody, it always flows back. It can be as simple as giving away a smile, a greeting, a on the back. my conclusion, my summary for this morning. We need to come together. Not just maybe, not just when we feel like it. Regularly with things. I've spoken about some of the purpose today. We need to come together regularly with purpose. Because we're a living community. Let me read to you again from Romans 12, 4 and 5. For just as each of us has one body, we have many members. And these members do not all have the same function. So it is in Christ. Though many form, we form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Actually, that takes it to a whole new level, doesn't it? Each member belongs to the others. That means when you're missing, that means when I'm not here, or one of us is isolated, and something is taken away from the purposes of God. I want to encourage you this morning. Think about where you fit in to the community of believers. 
I really want to encourage you, if you're not part of a connect group, if you're not part of a small group, uh, a prayer tripling, a um, youth group, think about being part of it. There is an isolation we are on. We are on. And I think that's what I was going for. I think he wants us to be emancipated. I think he wants to be part of something. I haven't even spoken about vision this morning. I haven't even spoken about some of the purposes of the body of Christ in one. But it's important when it comes to worship that we get. It's important relationally that we come together. It's important that we bring the gifts of God, the abilities of God, and use them one for another. It's important that we watch out for and watch over. Keep 
strong health. Well, it's been a seven months since.